Hey, good afternoon. We're here with Sarah Lamley from Sarah Lamley Marketing. How are you doing, Sarah? Great, thank you. Really good. How are you? Do thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. So if we just head straight in, if you'd like to tell the audience a little bit about who you are, what you do, how long you've been doing it for, please. So um, I am a marketer, basically, it's summing it up in one word. I'm a marketer. I've been doing this <laughs> for longer than I really want to admit, 23 years. <laughs> wow, long time. <laughs> yeah, it does feel like a long time, but in a good way, in a good way, in a good way. Um, and over that time, I have worked agency side. I've worked client side for a number of big brands. I worked for Orange for a period of time. I was global brand director for GHD, the hair straightening brand, hair styling brand, should I say, for, um, for around seven years. Um, grew that business and uh, took an exit um, in about 2013. And then um, more recently, I've been running my own business, the Sarah Lamy Marketing. It's a consultancy. Um, provi I provide consultancy training and mentoring on all aspects of marketing, but specifically focused on brand building and brand strategy. Great. And in terms of your own marketing sort of agency side, uh, how long have you been doing that for? Is that since 2013 or is it a bit sooner than that? How long have I been doing? Um, Sarah Lamley Marketing. Sarah Lamley Marketing. So, well, this is an interesting story, actually, because um, I probably the last four to five years I've been I was contracting. So um, I would go and cover marketing director roles or CMO roles for yeah. um people going on mat leave and things like that loved it loved going into businesses and you know making a difference and those period you know it would be sort of six months 12 months that kind of thing um and then <laughs> rightly or wrongly just before covid hit I took the decision that actually I didn't want to just go into one business anymore I wanted to work with a number of different businesses and have that variety and almost not pick and choose but just definitely choose the projects choose the um the businesses that I felt I had the most alignment with and that I could add the most yeah. value to. So took the decision to stop contracting in that way and start sort of working on, you know, a project by project basis, um, ended a contract um, literally the week that everything, <laughs> everything yes. kicked off and everything closed down and, um, you know, the, um, the lockdowns were announced and yeah. thought to myself, what on earth have I done? <laughs> How is this going to work? I, I had a couple of projects lined up um, that I was really looking forward to. Both of them disappeared overnight um, because of the announcement um, and sort of thought, right, okay, I'm going to have to kind of regroup a bit here. Suddenly found myself in a position with obviously no income and in, in a really challenging environment to generate new oh. business as a, as a, you know, as a new, new business yeah, yeah. working in that way. Um, so it took me probably about eight weeks to be able to raise my first invoice. So I I, I got one client, um, started doing a little bit of work for them. That went really well, started billing and it just rolled from there. And touch wood, I must say <laughs> that, um, it's just gone from strength to strength. And I, I find myself super busy and having to... Um, you know, book people kind of well in advance now, which is yeah. a lovely position to be in. Great. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. Um, yeah, what a scary, a lot of unknown at that time. And it's yeah. reflecting back on that. And there's lots yeah. of people that we talk to, uh, you know, similar circumstances where they take one decision just before all this sort of happened and it totally kind of skewed what, what the plans that they had and then had to adapt and change uh, and yeah. go forward. So was there anything that you had to kind of change or adapt to in in how you approach things or is it just clients looking for different uh, assistance because of yeah I in a way I don't think I because of the timing it wasn't as though I'd been working in a certain way and I had to, I mean obviously I had been working in a certain way I'd been working as a as a contractor working on that basis um, but it, it wasn't so much that I had to change how I was working but I think fortunately for me perhaps what I had envisaged life would be like turned out to be very different and it, but in a very good way so I think I thought as a consultant there would be a lot more face-to-face -face activity perhaps a lot more travel um 
you know, and, and especially if I was to sort of get clients um, any further away than, than, than where I live, obviously I, I was going to have to travel to see them. Um, and actually what's happened is because people have embraced virtual ways of working so much, I now have clients all over the place. I have them all over, all over the country, yeah. all over the world, um, which me you know, and, and there's no kind of sense of, oh, we're working with a consultant. They have to be in the room with us. People are very open to it. And, and actually, that's really helped me because it means that I've been able to pick up business. I've got a client in Australia. I've got a client in L.A. I've got a client in Iran. I've got um, I've, and then in the UK, I've got clients, you know, I've got a client down in Plymouth. I've got one up in, in Glasgow. Um, yeah with me being based obviously in Yorkshire. So it's really actually in a weird way, the, the timing was good because it meant that people were so much more open to um, sure. to working with me virtually. Great, thank you. Yeah, it's uh, definitely opened up a lot of opportunities for a number of people in terms of being able to work virtually. So that's a good share, thank you. So what does the future look like from where you are now? And what do you see are the main challenges going ahead so I think um anybody who sells their time will probably tell a similar story you know there's only so many hours in the day um and yes you have to charge what's right for the level of um support that you're providing but also the level of insight the level of knowledge that you bring to any particular project but there's going to be a cap on that you know you can't kind of just go oh, I want to earn more money so I'm just going to keep increasing my hourly yeah. rate that's not how it works uh, sadly um so for me the future is about how can I scale um without having to take on a load of a load of staff because when people work with me they're buying into me and they're buying into my experience and my knowledge and I, I feel like by just bringing somebody else in to work with them, I'd be potentially shortchanging that client. And I've been on the receiving end of that as well. You know, I've worked with consultants, I've worked with marketing agencies where they bring out kind of the A-list team to pitch to you. And then yeah. when you actually get the work done, it's done by kind of like the, the C-list or the, or the junior exec or whatever. And, and that's really frustrating because you buy into the person that you speak to in that, in that first instance. So I want to be able to provide that level of service, that level of support. Um, from me um, but I'm not looking to uh, to to grow my business in the sense of having a big team or, or grow a big consultancy or, bro, or grow an mm -hmm. agency so it's how do I scale um, uh, without going down that road and um, I've had lots of conversations I've got lots of ideas about this and um, I guess that, that that's my biggest challenge but I've got some exciting things coming up, some things that will allow me to generate passive income while still giving people access to my knowledge and expertise. Um, so yeah, lots, lots of exciting things to come. But that I think anyone who sells their time and, and works alone, essentially, yeah. will tell you the same story. Great. I love that share. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I think, some good uh, feedback there for people in similar situations to yourselves and um yeah that kind of agency model but how do you replicate that as a as a sort of sole person and use yourself as your as your brand um and your your service levels keeping those up that is uh, an important share of, of how to how to potentially do that the passive income one sounds sounds interesting so look yeah. forward to seeing how that how that develops yeah um, so moving on to your to yourself then uh and in terms of sharing a learning what would you say so far being a business owner yourself is your biggest learning to date if there's one that you can pick out of i'm sure there's there's plenty oh, I know there, well there are loads it's difficult <laughs> yeah. i think if you'll allow me i've got a couple but just two i'll, I'll, yeah, I'll restrict yeah sure <laughs> i mean the, the more the more learning there's the, the better the benefit for everyone i think um the first is that um the, the competition isn't always the competition i've had some of the best um, referral client referrals to me from other marketers who for whatever reason they're perhaps just not quite the right fit or their skill set lies in a slightly different area and they've thought of me um, you know someone who's perhaps a more of a, of a comm specialist I would consider myself to be an all-round generalist marketer um, with a real passion and focus um, brand because that's that's where my most of my experience is and what I get the most excited about but I've had lots of good business shared with me from other marketers so you know the competition we there's enough business for everyone I think is probably what I'd say and it, it's good to 
it's always worth having conversations and making connections and keeping positive relationships with people who you might perceive to be a competitor um, and vice versa you know I've I've passed business or re referred clients to other people within the same space as me who for whatever reason are just not quite a right fit for me so that that's kind of my, my first learning and that's a really good source of business I think the second is um, that my I learn all the time from my clients so they're running businesses too um, and although I'm there to provide a service for them um, I tend to build very strong relationships with my clients um, dare I say borderline friendships it, it almost becomes it and you you know you you get to the the stage where actually you're able to share information about running a business with each other um, and I've learned things about what I should do with my business by listening to what my clients are doing not necessarily specifically to do with marketing because obviously that's where sure. I'm helping them but in, in other aspects of their business they've shared with me things that have worked for them um, and that's actually really helped me so yeah, you never know where the learning is going to come from. I think you know, yeah. uh, so it's good to it's good to just keep your eyes and ears open, really, and be open to it. Yeah, brilliant. It sounds like you have an abundant kind of attitude towards uh, business and obviously opportunities that that are out there, which yeah, we certainly agree with that. There's um, there's plenty to to go around, and that kind of cooperation between people is is a pretty powerful thing. Thank yeah. you for that. Um, so if um, you were to meet a younger person or potentially we could even say yourself at 18 what would be the best bit of advice you could uh, give to them of say starting a business and looking towards the future at 18? Oh, well this is not my first time running a business I started a different business when I was younger that sadly didn't quite work out like lots of lots of you know young entrepreneurs it didn't quite work yeah. out um and I think the biggest learning from that was be really mindful of how you how you involve people so I I definitely spent too much of my budget on I was I think I was probably quite anxious about not knowing everything so definitely my approach was I need to find the money to go out and get an expert to help me with this or get someone to help me with that and I think it's a bit of a balance because I think there's definitely areas where you if you pay somebody who knows what they're doing you can shortcut and get to where you want to get to much much more quickly and it's definitely more efficient to do it that way but I think there's all sorts of things that you can do for yourself uh, just with a little bit of learning um, and I think I probably was was too reluctant to do that. And, and perhaps was, I, I think I spent too much money buying knowledge when actually there were some things that I could have very much done for myself. So if if I was and it, it, it slightly that was in a, that was in a business where I was designing a product and as well as doing all of the marketing and brand building, I was designing a product, retailing it, you know, all of those things. And yeah. um, so it was it was very much. I was doing everything I was doing you know everything from back returns and you know literally yeah. everything um and like I say I think if I could go back there are areas that I invested money in that with hindsight I didn't need to spend I could have done that myself and um that would have helped me in the in the long run to just manage manage my investment a bit bit more tight in a bit more of a tight way I think Good advice. Thank you. Good share. It's something that, uh, yeah, definitely resonates. Um, maybe being in a position sim similar to that, you think the world and experts know know everything, and some, sometimes you know that wisdom and that experience. You look back and go, I don't think everybody does know everything, and yeah, no, it, exactly. There's a lot of value in learning things yourself. Yeah, there is learning how to and understand. Do you know? I don't regret that experience at all because it taught it taught me so much. Um, about running a business generally, which I've been able to apply with my, you know, and, and use every single day with my clients um, in their, you know, and relate to uh, lots of my clients are SMEs and startups. Um, so I can really relate to that kind of startup mentality and that, mm -hmm. that you know, um, ha having to really think very carefully about where you invest and, and what you're doing and, and can relate to it and have been in a position where it's been my money that I've been investing, yeah. um, which, uh, you know, it matters, I think, that you can understand that and that you can have those conversations one-to-one um, -one with people because 
you know, very often the clients I'm dealing with, it, it is their own money that they are investing in, in what they're doing. So they, they want that reassurance that they're doing the right thing. Great stuff. Thank you for that. Good share. And in terms of inspiration, what uh, is inspiring you currently? Could be books you read, anything you listen to. It might be the clients that you work with, friends, family, anything like that that's worth a, a share on, on inspiration for you. Oh, but I mean, inspiration comes from like everywhere. I, I, yeah. I'm, I consider myself to be a, a lifelong learner. I've got a very um, learning approach to everything I do. I've constantly got a book on the go. If people recommend books, you know, business books, I'm, I'm there uh, reading them. Lots of bedside <laughs> reading, <laughs> bedtime reading. Um, yeah. So yeah, big big and, and every book I read usually most of the books I read I, I, I learn something and take something away from you know it, it's inspiring from from that um I think my clients inspire me every day lots of them as I say lots of them start a business lots of them are doing things that are really ambitious and in a really brave way um I've got one client in particular who is so inspirational she's she she runs an amazing business um and she's still in she's in her 70s and is just loving life and um every time I speak to her I think gosh this is you're someone that I want to emulate you you know you've yeah. had such a successful career you've grown more than one business you're still in the thick of it and enjoying it and um she's very inspiring so I love my conversations with her um and then I think sort of on a more um I don't know academic level I suppose um you'll have heard I'm sure of Mark Ritson the uh, famous marketing professor uh who um writes from writes in marketing week posts regularly on LinkedIn you know always has something controversial to say um so and I'm he's the sort of, I've never met him he's the sort of person when you read you read his stuff that you think actually if I, he, he he wouldn't he wouldn't thank me for saying I find what he writes inspiring actually <laughs> I think you'd probably not not appreciate that, but I do. I, I I appreciate what he writes, and I and I spend a lot of time um, following him and, and reading his articles and things because uh, he's a great source of information and knowledge. Brilliant! Thank you for that share. That's really good. Um, and then lastly, in terms of uh, latest news around uh, your business, if you'd like to share anything uh, such as that, or where we can go, website, just direct us as to where to find you. Yeah, so my website is sarahlamleymarketing.com. It uh, does what it says on the tin. Kept, kept it yeah. pretty, pretty, pretty straightforward. Nice. You're a marketer, um, that helps. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, as I mentioned, I've got something new and exciting coming down the line. Um, uh, a An opportunity for people to sign up for regular support from me, directly from me, in the form of... Um, want to call it it's like a mentor program or a, a finishing school or I don't know but I, I haven't quite yet decided on a name uh, naming things is one of the hardest things to do um but it, it's a program where you can access lots of training materials from me about brand building um lots of templates lots of useful tools but also every single month there's going to be a um a q a every month a live q a where marketers can cut marketers business owners business founders um, can come and ask me questions um, about marketing and brand really no, no topic is is off limits but what I'm trying to do with that is I, I see lots of clients who um, they're not in a position to hire in senior marketing advice you know their budget's yeah. just not going to stretch to that there are lots of smaller clients who will have quite junior marketers maybe even people who didn't start their careers in marketing but have ended up in the marketing hot seat by just being very good at, at, at whatever else they've been doing within an organization and they're a trusted pair of hands. And so they're on a learning journey themselves to take on marketing for that organization. Um, and I, I just feel that everybody should have access to that, that knowledge, that, that high level thinking is relevant, whether you are running a small business or you know, it's a, you're in a, a blue chip environment. So for me, I want to be able to provide access to that to my level of thinking to my 23 years of experience to as many people as possible in an affordable way so the idea is that people will sign up for 12 months to a to a, for a small monthly fee um, of 100 pounds they'll be able to access 
my thinking and my brain and uh, come on a regular Q&A and uh, hopefully get all of their marketing challenges resolved. So that's Brilliant. coming down the line. It's on its way shortly. Sounds amazing. We will look out for that. Sarah, thank you very much for sharing all that with us. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. I hope it continues to go from strength to strength for you. Thank you. Thank you so much.